everybody. Today I wanted to talk about an issue that many people might not be aware, um, many people might not know what to do, but I wanted to discuss it and it's a very sensitive and personal topic, but I think it's important that we discuss it. So I'm going to be talking about how to deal with a depressed person or a person who is suffering from depression in a relationship. Now as you all know, I am married almost five years now and at this point in time I personally feel that I'm going through depression. Now many of you might not notice it because in my videos I'm very happy and even at work, you know, and just in life, I'm, I'm a very happy person, but it's more behind the scenes that the depression comes out, you know. For example, you know, I mean, I've, I've cried my entire way to work before some mornings just thinking about some of the issues that I'm having and then I go to work and I put a smile on, I wipe my tears away and nobody knows any difference. You know, so, but the one person who usually knows what you're going through is your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever that significant other is in your relationship. And that can really have an effect on your relationship. So I just kind of wanted to talk about a few aspects of things that you can do as a person who is dealing with the depression and as the significant other who is dealing with the person who has depression. So first let's talk about if you are depressed, you know, how do you deal with that in a relationship? And the number one thing that I have to say is talk about it. If you're having an issue, whether it's because of that spouse, because of something else, you need to tell your significant other that you're having issues, that you're feeling sad, and why you're feeling that way. Because if you just shut them out of it, they're not going to be able to help you and they're going to feel that they're doing something wrong and that can really lead to problems. If you don't communicate with your significant other, then you could potentially, you know, end up in divorce or breaking up because it, it's, it's hard to deal with someone who is not willing to talk to you and is crying or sad or grumpy or angry all the time and they don't know what to do and it can become very frustrating for them. So, and especially, you know, if you're the type of person who, like myself, you know, dealing with depression, you tend to kind of lash out, like I tend to cry about it. I'm not necessarily like a mean, screaming type of person, but you know, I'll start bawling for no reason whatsoever or just because I'm thinking about something and you know, Jenna doesn't know what to do or she thinks that I'm being crabby because of her or something like that but you just need to be very clear with them, you know, what is going on, why are you feeling that way, you know, and tell them what they can do to help you, whether it's they, you want them to leave you alone, or talk to you, or hold you, or whatever it is. Clear communication in your relationship is key. The second thing that you need to do if you are, you know, in a depression, you feel depressed, is do not take it out on your significant other. I cannot stress this enough. You know, you have issues that you're dealing with, whether it's family, with friends, with work, whatever it is that is causing you to be depressed, and if it's not your significant other that is the cause of that depression, don't take it out on them. Don't, you know, sh shut them out or be mean to them or anything like that because number one, it's not their fault. And number two, that's not going to help your relationship in any way whatsoever. It's just going to make it even harder on them. And then you're going to feel guilty about it. And if you keep lashing out at them, then they're going to feel bad or you're going to get mad. And then it's just going to make you feel even more guilty and then you feel even more depressed about it. That person loves you and they're there to support you. So you need to use them as a support, not as a punching bag or a scapegoat or whatever it is. Because you just need to understand, you know, it, while it's your depression and your feelings inside, they're there to support you and I think they're one, it's one of the best tools, you know, to have if, if, as a, sig a significant other. So definitely make sure you realize and you analyze the reasons why you're depressed and, you know, make sure you don't just blame them because maybe a lot of times when you're depressed, little tiny things will get to you. You know, maybe they didn't do the dishes or maybe you asked them to do something and they didn't do it and then you just lash out at them or you, you just, you think, oh, they're just the worst person ever. But that is not necessarily them. That's your depression talking and making it seem like they're worse than they are. Everybody has, you know, they're not perfect, they have problems and you need to remember that your spouse isn't perfect 
and they're you know they're doing their best and don't let the depression make them seem like a bad person when they're not um and then i guess kind of one of the last things i wanted to talk about you know as a person who is depressed is you know find a way to deal with your depression whether it's counseling medication whatever it is and make sure that you and your partner, your uh, significant other, are both in line with it. Because if you work together, you know, in whatever it is, whether it's counseling or medication or just relaxing baths or whatever you need to do to help you get through those times when you're really depressed, um, I think that working together as a team is just going to make you even stronger. And you can get through a depression, you know with your significant other it doesn't need to ruin your relationship now talking as somebody on the other side the significant other who is dealing with the person who is depressed um, there's a few things number one you need to understand that depression doesn't necessarily have to do anything with you you know maybe they cry or they get angry or something they, they lash out you need to remember it's not against you you know maybe they say it is against you but you just kind of have to that's where the communication thing comes in you know if you've talked to them about what the reasons are and then one day did one day they just lash out at you or they don't want to talk to you or they're not very affectionate that day just remember that it, it's not against you and you just need to let them get through it you know that will pass and you just need to be there in support whatever it is and that leads to number two is listen to your significant other. You know, some people need to be held. Some people do not want to be held. Try to be as clear as possible with them. What can I do to help you when you're having your down times, when you're not feeling so good? You know, what, what can I do for you? And listen to what they have to say and do what they say. If they don't want to be touched, they don't want to be held, even if that's what you want to give them, respect what their wishes are. Now, there are gonna be times when you might have to put some tough love on them though. You know, if it gets to the point where your significant other is just sitting there in bed all day and they're unwilling to do anything, then you might really need to get on them a bit and get them mad at you so that they're actually gonna do something. You know, you might have to be pushy about it. But in general, respect what their wishes are, but kind of know when you might need to cross the line and, you know, help them out. You know, I've had times where I get totally stressed out and you know dealing with depression makes that even worse you know little things get to me and so sometimes jenna has to kind of force me to just sit down and relax or do something or you know talk to me about something and she kind of has to take control of that situation and sometimes you might need to do that you might need to take control and help them along the way because going through depression is really hard and the more support you can give them the better it's going to be um, and i guess the last thing is just you know remember that this is not your entire relationship. While well, depression can last years at some times, you know, it's important that you stick with that person and you help them as much as you can and you give them love and understanding and just know that you can get through this together. So hopefully um, these tips have kind of helped you guys. And just remember, you know, if you are feeling depressed, please go and get help. I'm gonna have, you know, phone numbers and websites for different places that you can get counseling if that's what you want. Um, that's what you feel that you need and just remember you know you're not crazy just because you're depressed it happens to everybody and it's just important that you try to take steps towards getting through that depression and just kind of getting your life back because it can happen so i hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and maybe it's helped you out a bit you know having a relationship is a wonderful thing and depression does not need to be something to rip you guys apart so I hope that you guys stay strong in your relationship and if you are feeling depressed and you want to talk about it, you know, leave a comment, private message me, whatever it is, I'm here for you guys and yeah. As always, I will have other videos down here. Maybe you want to watch some of my funny videos or just something to pass the time when you're not feeling so up. So click them, watch them, like them, share them. And if you're not subscribed, click subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.